Hey guys, let's get started on our next topic. Our next unit is going to be organic chemistry. It's one of my favorites. This is the first in the series. Our topic today is saturated hydrocarbons. So organic chemistry, just for those of you who don't know, it's become a big scary term, especially at the college level. But for us, here's what you need to know. We're going to be studying carbon containing compounds. There are millions of them. We're just going to learn how to name some of the most basic, simple ones. So we're starting off with hydrocarbons. As you can probably guess from the name, these things contain hydrogen and they contain carbon. They can be very, very long chains. They can be much shorter. We're going to spend some time talking about hydrocarbon chains that stretch from one carbon, perhaps all the way up to 10 carbons in a row. Okay. Now, the reason there's so much diversity in carbon containing compounds is that the bonding of carbon is kind of unusual. It can form kind of a lot of different bonds. If you take a look at the Lewis structure that I have here, you can see it has four valence electrons. That means it has four valence electrons that could participate in a sharing or a covalent bond. And so this carbon structure right here could form up to four bonds in order to become more stable. Okay, so first things first, saturated hydrocarbons have single bonds only between their carbons. So you'll notice I highlighted the S there and the S there. S saturated means single bonds. These are otherwise known as alkanes. That's the name of their family. And we're going to start by drawing some very simple ones right here. This first structure right here with one carbon in the center and then surrounded by four hydrogens that are involved in bonds with it. This is known right here as methane. Its chemical formula is CH4. And the reason it's called methane is because the prefix meth means one carbon. And you can find this in table P of your reference table, P for prefixes. So the meth means that there is one carbon. The ending A-N-E indicates that it's all single bonds. The next larger one in the alkane family would be two carbons joined together. You'll see a black bond here showing carbon to carbon bond. And then all of the rest of the bonding areas are filled with a hydrogen. The formula for this substance is C2H6. Using table P, P for prefixes, you'll see that the name for this should be S, meaning two carbons and ane, meaning all single bonded. So ethane is what this structure is right here. The third one we're gonna take a look at, the next larger one in the series, has three carbons all linked together with a single bond. The rest of the bonding opportunities all are with hydrogen. The formula for this is C3H8. And if you use table P, P for prefixes, you will see that the prefix we're going to use for three carbons is prop. And then the A-N-E ending tells us it's all single bonds. So this is propane. If you have a gas grill that might be run by propane, this is the molecule that's heating up your hamburger. So I have this big drawing up here and I'll talk, call your attention to certain parts of it in just one moment, but here are the notes that I need you to have about the alkane family. Something that you should know, they're all going to end in A-N-E. These are straight chains of carbon, all single bonded together in a long straight chain. They contain only carbon and hydrogen. If it has something other than carbon and hydrogen, it is not a hydrocarbon. Okay. As I said, table P, P for prefixes is going to help you with the naming. Now I need to show you what the general formula is. So if you take a look up here at this big long thing, you will see inside the dashed box that every carbon has a hydrogen above and a hydrogen below. Hydrogen above, hydrogen below. So there are two hydrogens for every carbon that's in here. The thing that's special about alkanes is there is also a hydrogen on each carbon that's on the end that's extra. 
So the way that we express that general formula, if you have n carbons, where n can be any whole number, the number of hydrogens that you will have is twice that number of carbons plus two more. So for example, if you have a general formula where you have seven carbons, seven would be your n, so the number of hydrogens would be two times seven, which is 14, plus two, so it'd be C7H16. Okay, you're gonna need a table P and a piece of paper. I'd like you to try all of these and bring them with you to class on Monday. So you are going to draw structures for me, that is the carbons, the hydrogens, and all of the bonds, for methane, butane, and heptane. Once you've tested those out, I would like you to give me the name for these. So if you have two carbons, C2H6, what should we name it? If you have C5H12, what should we name it? C10H22, what should we name that? And then finally, I'd like you to complete the formula. So here we have C3H, I don't know. You use the general formula, see if you can figure that out. This one here, C6H, who knows? And the last one, C9H, I don't know. So see if you can fill in the formulas for all three of those. Bring in all of this with you on Monday.